evening, YouTube Model Railroader fans. Welcome to the Beauville Newtown. I'm Ray, and this is going to be a howdy do that. <clears throat> and it's also <clears throat> kind of sort of <laughs> going to be, um, I think I'm up to vlog eight. I keep forgetting to look before I come down here and start this, but it's April the 7th, 2016. And this is going to be vlog number eight for 2016. Well, actually, it's a howdy do that slash vlog. <laughs> um, there had been... Hmm, um, I know on one of the past uh, YouTube Model Builders live shows, uh, there was a, there's been... Actually, on a couple of them, there's actually been questions about locomotive maintenance. Um, now, a couple things here real quick. Obviously, if you haven't watched me before... I'm strictly a DC HO scale model railroader. Um, I've been in the hobby since uh, about 1976. Actually, it started when I was really young, but when I really started getting into it, it was about 1976. Um, I took a little bit of a break while I was in the service, although I did buy some some stuff that was in the service from 88 to 92 um, in the United States Navy uh, sonar technician for on the on the surface. Um, it was on a guided missile fast rig called the Clock Ring, FFG-42, which is presently sitting in the Philadelphia Naval Yard in mothballs, but, um, and from, like, say, 80, 1988 to about 1992, 94-ish, um, I was out of, basically out of the hobby. I didn't have a layout. Um, then I went ahead and built a small engage layout, uh, called the Penn Central Humbles Down Division which has done some, or actually really been scrapped. It's actually sitting down here in my train room, but it's, it's in pieces. Um, and then when my daughter was born in 99, for Christmas of 99, I went ahead and brought over uh, what my grandfather started for my father back in the 50s, and it just kind of basically snowballed from there. Um, I have a 11 foot by 13 foot layout in the basement. It was originally in a 13 by 13 foot by 11 foot room um, in my mother-in-law's basement. Uh, for a couple of years, and it was designed to fill that room, and then we bought the house that I would presently live in, and, well, now it sits here, and um, eventually I'll be redoing it, um, but that's enough, I think that's enough of a background, but what I will, really wanted to get into tonight, folks, um, it's something that's been talked about, it's kind of been passed around, batted around a little bit, is locomotive maintenance, and like I said, you have to remember, I'm an HO gauger, I'm old school. I'm still straight DC over here. Um, so, but I think the reality of it is whether you're running Z scale or running LGB, uh, I think for the most part, probably locomotive maintenance is going to be about the same. How they come apart is going to be a little bit different. I've got a couple of examples sitting over here that we're going to play with. I've got a, um, a Mantua GP20 that we're going to go ahead and take a look at. I've got a lifelike FP45 that I'm going to go ahead and take a look into. We have an IHC, uh, I think this is an SD18. Uh, we have a Bachman, a normal Bachman. Now if you notice, a lot of these are already sitting apart and there's a reason why. Uh, we have an old 1960s Revell engine. We have an old AHM Tempo Sea Liner. And of course, anybody who's been following me over the last couple of months will recognize the Atherton GP30. So those are the locomotives that we're actually going to play with. And the first one that I'm actually going to mess with is going to be uh, the Southern, uh, the IHC model. And there's a reason. It's actually held together with screws. <laughs> this is strictly going to be diesels tonight, folks. I don't... I don't want to make this video so long that you lose interest and so on and so forth. So I'm going to try and try and keep this somewhat short and sweet. Just want to, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a full maintenance run. Let me go ahead and move this camera here a little bit. Hey, there we go. We're going to do a full maintenance run. We're going to do a full maintenance run. Hey, that works. <laughs> we're going to do a full maintenance run on the southern unit. And then I'm going to show you how the other units come apart and what they look like on the inside. So they'll give you a little bit of an idea as to what goes on inside these locomotives. I'm sure some of you have had these apart before. You probably have your own maintenance plans, so on and so forth. I get it. 
this is just one of those things that somebody had asked about that I, I don't remember seeing anybody really go into this. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to take a few minutes tonight, strictly the diesels. Probably next week I'll go ahead and I'll pull out the steam locomotives and the electric locomotives. And, and for the most part, they're all basically the same. Here again, it's how they come apart. So a few tools that you're going to need um, to start off with is an assortment of screwdrivers. And that's either going to be to pull uh, the shells off or to, in the case of the Southern, actually unscrew the frame from the, from the shell itself. And I've got a couple different size, I've got two different sized Phillips head screwdrivers here and a couple different sized uh, flathead screwdrivers. Um, these are jewel, basically jeweler screwdrivers also. These are really nice because you can basically use them with one hand. You know, you can actually put your finger here and you can unscrew and screw, you know, and these are not magnetic. They probably could be, but they're not. Mine aren't. The other thing that you're going to need is going to be uh, oil that's good for plastic. You obviously do not want to use any type of an oil that's going to eat plastic. That's a bad thing. The same thing goes for your grease. Uh, this here happened to be, this happens to be from Atlas. This is Atlas Gear, uh, gear Lube. Um, it's a basically uh, just like anything else. It's a grease is what it is. And I'm going to show you how we use, how I use that. Um, I know this might sound a little unorthodox, but I actually also use crocus cloth. And the crocus cloth is for cleaning up the wheels. Um, I know you've, you'll, you'll probably hear, don't use sandpaper, it scratches the wheels, so on and so forth. I get that. Crocus cloth is extremely, extremely fine. It's a polisher more than it is anything else. I have used this uh, my father used it for years on his Ravel locomotive, on his Tyco locomotive, um, the old steam locomotive that I'll show you next week. I've used it on my diesels. I have not had a problem using crocus cloth to take up and just kind of shine things up a little bit. You don't have to put a whole lot of pressure on this. You just kind of let it sit on there. Sometimes I'll put a screw, put it around a screwdriver. As you can see, this piece is folded. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take the blade of a screwdriver and stick it in there. And that way I can get in on the wheels just a little bit, just enough. Like I said, you're only trying to polish. You're not trying to, you know, get in there and gouge the living heck out of the thing. You're just trying to polish. And if your wheels are extremely dirty, 70% alcohol and a paper towel. Because you don't want to use any type of a towel that's going to have uh, any type of lint to it. I've always used paper towels or an old, uh, or an old sock. I know, it sounds kind of funny, but that's that's what I've used. Um, and like I said, I've been doing this doing this for years. Um, unfortunately, I don't have one of my old... I'm talking about the white tube socks. You know, the ones where you go ahead and you wear them so much that they get a hole in them and they're no more good because now your big toe's sticking through it. Yeah, that's what you, <laughs> you want to use. So, um, and of course, last but not least, one of the things that's extremely handy on any model railroad, whether you're a newbie or an expert, go ahead and get yourself one of these dudes. Uh, this here happens to be for HO gauge. This is an NM NMRA standards gauge. This here has uh, cutouts for your wheel sets, uh, your track width. Your If you set this on the track, it's good for the height, so that way you get your heights right. It's got a little hole here if you set this on the track. If you set this on the track, that's where your coupler height should be if you're running horn hooks, which I'm doing, uh, at least presently. Eventually, I'm going to go ahead and convert to KDs, but or something similar as to that, probably somewhere down the line. Um, so, I know that was quick. If you have any questions, and I'm going to go ahead, and when I put this video up, I'll put down the different things that I used. Uh, so that way you can kind of look back at it. There is one other thing. Unfortunately, I can't show you because the computer down here, well, I had internet issues. My router, my 14-year-old cable router <laughs> took a dump last weekend. And I was using the computer down here to try and get things set back up. And I haven't turned it back on yet. So, um, But I actually use Excel to not only uh, as an inventory list of all my... Uh, rolling stock and all my locomotives, but I also have a sheet specifically for when I do maintenance on locomotives. And I think I've mentioned it before, no matter how much or how little I run these locomotives, 
I will pull them over here to the bench, take them apart, clean them up on the inside, put them back on the layout at minimal every six months. Sometimes it's a little, sometimes, well, in this case, I think it's been almost nine months, probably closer to a year since the last time I stripped some of these locomotives. And the reason being, I haven't been down here to mess with the locomotives or play with the, run the trains or anything like that. So I'm a little bit behind. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, like I said, this is an IHC. It's a painted up for the Southern. Uh, it happens to be an SD. Like I said, I think it's like an SD-18 or something like that. And as you can see, that I've already pulled a couple of screws out. But, and I'm going to try to do this. I don't know how well it's going to show up. Up here, next to the truck, there's a hole. That was a screw. And it's on both sides of the truck. And then there was two in the gas tank. And I've already removed one. So we're going to go ahead and use our handy-dandy screwdriver here. And, as you like I said before... As you can tell these are jeweler screwdrivers which makes it real nice to just get in there oh one other thing that I didn't mention and it's definitely worth looking over or having is a is some sort of a holder for your locomotive and also for your parts um, off on off camera here I've actually got the screws sitting in this egg uh, crate piece of foam this actually came from packing material from when I used to work as a uh, shipper for some of the electronic gear that we would have to send out. And also a piece of track. And a power pack. I forgot to mention that too. I've got a power pack that I've just got mounted to my workbench here. So that way I can just bring it over, alligator clips, and I can turn it on and let the locomotive run so that way the gear oil and, and such gets through to the locomotive. Anyway, okay, so the gas tank is loose. This locomotive is a little bit goofy. You actually, and it, it's, this looks ridiculous, but you actually kind of have to bend the frame a little bit. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I got to take the couplers off. Or it's not going to slide through. Um, you kind of have to finagle this thing a little bit to get it to come... And of course, I figured this was going to happen. This thing is going to fight me tooth and nail. It might be easier if we just go ahead and open up the, the truck here. Alright. And yeah, it'll make things a lot easier. So what I did is I just pulled off one of the coupler, or the uh, truck covers. And now I should be able to just slide this thing right on out of here okay so there's your there's your shell and here is our frame and of course I still have the truck cover on this side now one of the things I normally do and this one here doesn't seem to be in too bad a shape but if I see up inside of here that there's a lot of like gunked up grease I'll go ahead and actually take the paper towel and um, that's cute I'll actually take the paper towel and kind of take all the gears out and wipe them on the paper towel, clean them up, so on and so forth. But in this case, this one here doesn't look too bad, so here's one other thing I forgot to tell you. <laughs> one other thing that you will definitely need when you're playing with the grease is a toothpick. These happen to be rounded toothpicks. I'm sure you could use a square one, but these are rounded, so... Anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take up a little bit of this grease, not a whole lot, and I'm going to go ahead and just place this over a couple of the gears. You don't need a whole lot of this, and in reality, all this is going to do is help this locomotive run a little bit smoother and run a little bit quieter. All right, so that's one side. So let's go ahead and pull the cover off the other side while we're here. And we'll do the same thing. Just, uh, just dab it in there just a little bit. You don't, Like I said, you don't need a whole lot. Now at this point also what I will do is take a look and see... 
that I go ahead and drop the gears all over the place, the, the wheels all over the place, like a fool. Now I gotta find them all. <sighs> you know, sometimes. Make sure I didn't pick up any dust or dirt on these things after I dropped them on the floor. Stay. There it is. <sighs> Note to self, never turn a locomotive upside down when you have the truck covers off. <laughs> that, was, that was a bad move on my part. That was, don't do that. <laughs> what I'm going to do so I don't do this again is we're going to try to snap this thing back into place and these going to go on one way. They're going to be over the front of the truck and then they snap on the rear, just like that. Okay, now we can turn it upside down. Now, if you notice, this locomotive has got a little extra weight added to it, and that's because of the fact that it was way too light when it came from the manufacturer, but we won't go into that. It was a cheap model, so. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a little bit of the oil, and we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit around the shaft on this side, and a little bit around the shaft on that side and because of the fact that this one here the way it's set up and you'll see I do things a little bit differently when I get to the atherin which I'm still going to do even though we're up to 17 minutes I knew that this I knew that this was going to run a little bit longer but um you'll find that with the atherins and the proto 2000 lifelike units that you also need to um, oil the the bearing for the worm gear and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute but and what I usually do is just let it run for a little bit just to make sure that I don't have any any issues and it actually sounds pretty good for what it is so we're gonna go ahead and we'll pull that back off now I've got to pull one of these truck covers back off so I can get the shell back on and it helps to put it in on the right put it in the right direction also there's a headlight here so obviously that's the front of the locomotive just drop it back into place put the truck cover back on and now we can put the gas tank back on And then we can put the screws back in. Oh, these, these, I'm sorry, these screwdrivers are magnetic. I'm sorry. That's a handy thing to have. Especially when you have to get in the tight spots like we're going to have to do here in a little bit. Which, to be honest, I'm not even sure why I'm bothering with this, but... Because the gas tank, or the fuel tank, will definitely hold this locomotive together. Not quite sure why IHC did it this way, but to each his own.
Alright, so now the only other thing we got to do with this locomotive is put its couplers back on, and these just slide in and snap. This one here would be one of those ones that would be a bit tough to convert, but... Alright, now, the next thing to do is go ahead and set it on our track. And pull out the NMR gauge, and we're good there. We're good there, and while we're at it, we'll check the gauge on the wheels. Good, 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 good. And these wheels are fairly clean, as you can see, they're rather, rather shiny, so I don't have to worry about touching these with the alcohol or the crocus cloth. So, this locomotive... Oh, it's an SD24, by the way. I just looked at the little couple, the little pocket that I've got sitting over, <laughs> over here for it. So, um, so that's that's that. So that's the IHC. Now with this here, I know that that was the wrong way to go, but this here is a Mantua GP20. Uh, basically the same type of deal. The only difference is, and it's they're tough to get to. Unless you take the locomotive apart, which I'm not going to do. Um, it'll be easier to show you on the Atherin. And these here, these shells, it's just a screwdriver up underneath between the frame and the shell just to pry it loose. And they just pop off. They just pop off. I'll show you on this guy. This will be an easy one. What I'm talking about with the bearings. And this locomotive, I don't have to worry about doing because I've already done it. And as you can... As we get, we've talked about, I've been, I bought this thing about a month ago and I've been doing a lot of work on it. But you would want to put a drop of oil here on that side of the worm gear. And if you can get to it, you would want to try and put a drop on this side as well. That way this, this worm gear gets oiled. And of course you want to do on either side of the motor itself. I don't know if I can, I can screw scoot this screwdriver in here and show you but you want to try and get oil down in there and a little bit of oil down over here and of course these here um, the, the uh, tops of the gearbox comes off and there's also these little pads underneath that you would just take a screwdriver up under and that's where you would uh, grease the uh, grease to the uh, the wheels so we're just going to set him off to the side um, the older AHMs same type of deal, shell comes off. These are rather unique. This is a, this motor actually sits vert, or I guess vertical, horizontal, whatever. Um, here again, you wanna put some oil around this bearing. And then of course, this here is held together with screws. So you wanna take the screws off and you wanna oil, or I'm sorry, not oil, but you wanna grease down inside of here. Same type of deal, they've got gears up in here, just like the, um, uh, the southern unit had and then of course once you're done you just go ahead and pop the shell back on and here done I'm not going to actually do these I'm just going to show you what I've got or what we've got going on here so you see the different ones I don't know how many people are actually going to come across one of these but we'll talk about him real quick um, this here is an old Ravel F7 this is a rubber band drive back here with a clutch Believe it or not, this is a clutched locomotive. The faster the, the thing spins, the flywheel spins, it actually goes ahead and engages. And then the rubber band actually drives um, a jack shaft that's up underneath of here. There's actually gears underneath of here. But here again, you want to definitely put a drop of oil right here on this side of the motor and on this side of the motor uh, where the shaft meets the motor itself. And that's all you have to do with that. Do do do, moving right along. <laughs> Twenty-four minutes in. Woo! -hoo. <laughs> this is an old Bachman pancake motor. These are an absolute. These are absolutely in, uh, absolutely nuts to mess with. Um, here again, just like the other locomotives, you have um, a spot, and this has got extra weights in it that just fell out. But right here, you've got your spot that you want to oil. That's the motor, and you want to do that on both sides. Of the motor and then up inside of just like the other locomotives there's a gear ca gear case up in here you want to go ahead and make sure that that's got a lot of grease in it 
not a lot of grease, but you want to make sure it's lubricated, and that way it'll run better. Put the BQ3023.7 back together there. And last but not least is an, is the <laughs> FP45. Um, and this one here, the same type of deal, you've got the motor in here, you're going to want to try and put a drop of oil down on this side of the shaft and on this side of the shaft. There's actually a clip here that holds the motor into the frame. And then just like the Atherin locomotives and the IHC, you want to go ahead and just open up back here and your gears are down inside of here. Make sure you got a little bit of grease in there and you'll be good to go. And these locomotives, since these have been up on the shelves, these don't run at all, so I don't have to worry about doing too much to these. But, and it just snaps back on. So, let me go ahead and fix the camera here real quick. That's basic maintenance. Um, I know that was quick. I'm hoping it answered some questions. It may have brought up some questions. But the big thing is, is... I look at it this way. My father always told me, you take care of your stuff, your stuff will take care of you. Going ahead every six months or so, depending on how much you run, if you run your locomotives a lot, you may want to bring that down to three months, but at least every six. Go ahead, bring them over to your workbench, take them apart, clean them up, give them a little bit of oil, give them a little bit of grease, and they'll be good to go. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Uh, my email will be in the uh, link section along with my Facebook, obviously my Facebook page. And leave your comments. I'll be happy to try and get. I'll be happy to get back to you. I'm hoping this was helpful. Um, one other quick thing before I go, because I know I'm up to 27 minutes now. Um, I do want to let you all know that I will be on the YouTube Model Builders Live for April the 6th, Saturday, April 16th at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central. Um, I'll be on with Big Bill and Barry. Um, we can probably talk about this a little bit more. <laughs> I'm hoping that I'll be able to get through the steam and the diesels next, or the steam and the electrics next week. And that way you guys can, the guys and gals can see how those are done. Like I said, for the most part, for the most part, the, the locomotive maintenance is the same, whether it's, it's an electric, whether it's a diesel, or whether it's steam. The biggest thing is how they come, how they come apart. Obviously, each one of them comes apart a little bit differently. Um, also, make sure that you put the caps back on this stuff when you're done, because it, it, it creates a mess if you drop it. <laughs> Just another tip to the wise. So, and like I said, I'll also go ahead and I'll put in um, what I use down here tonight and any other things that you would need for maintenance. So, with that being said, you all know the deal. You wait for the highball, green tracks ahead, we'll catch you next time. Be safe out there, folks. Have a good one.